Hi, I'm Michael. This is Lessons from the Screenplay. At least once a year, I put in my Blu-ray of Inglorious Bastards and watch two scenes. One of which is the opening scene, which serves as an introduction to the character of Hans Landa. This scene is like a masterclass in suspense. At 17 pages, it's one of the longest scenes in the screenplay, but it's so captivating that once I start it, I always have to finish it. So what makes this scene so effective? How does Quentin Tarantino turn 17 pages of people chatting into one of the most tension-filled scenes of recent memory? Today, I want to take a look at the anatomy of the opening scene, to examine the elements required to create tension and show how Tarantino's dialogue and character design created the suspenseful opening of Inglorious Bastards. In a paper titled Toward a General Psychological Model of Tension and Suspense by Moritz Len and Stefan Kolsch, they discuss six key components of tension experiences. Today, I want to examine four of them, beginning with conflict, dissonance, and instability. In their paper, Len and Kolsch write, Tension experiences usually originate from events associated with conflict, dissonance, or instability, which create a yearning for more stable or consonant states. Obviously, conflict is the most basic and integral part of storytelling. But the use of the word instability particularly speaks to an important aspect of suspense in this scene. Tarantino begins the film with a brief but effective portrait of what life is like for the people of this farm. We see one of the daughters hanging laundry and see the farmer swinging an axe at a tree stump. And in the script, Tarantino notes, however, simply by sight, you'd never know if he's been beating at this stump for the last year or just started today. I think this is a great way to suggest to the reader that this is a glimpse of their everyday stable lives. A stability that is broken as soon as the daughter sees the Nazis coming. Again, quoting the paper, such a disruption creates tension and suspense experiences in the audience that persist until the conflict is resolved and replaced by a more stable state. The appearance of the German soldiers pushes us toward a tension that will last until the conflict is resolved and a new stability is found, one way or another. The arrival of the soldiers also incites the second element of suspense, lack of control. This element of suspense is fairly self-explanatory. It simply states that our inability to influence the course of events can lead to an experience of tension. In this regard, the medium of film lends itself to suspense because it's a mode of storytelling where the audience has no say in what happens. Even in interactive storytelling mediums, the most suspenseful moments are often those where you have no control. When the daughter spots the Nazis approaching, there's no protest or resistance only a kind of subtle dread and acceptance. Tarantino includes in the script, after living for a year with the sword of Damocles suspended over his head, this may very well be the end. The farmer calmly directs his daughters, reminding them to check their behavior so as not to send the wrong signal. This suggests the wrong behavior may lead to undesirable consequences, and that the family is going to have to play this interaction very carefully. They lack control of the situation. In just two pages, Tarantino has laid the foundation for suspense. But this alone is not enough to create the intensity of suspense that we feel by the end of the scene. So now I want to move inside the house and talk about the substance of the scene between the farmer and Colonel Hans Landa. When a coin flip decides something trivial, like which pair of socks you're going to wear today, there isn't a lot of suspense. But when a coin flip decides if someone will live or die, Call it. there can be a lot of suspense. This is because the intensity of the suspense is proportional to our emotional investment in what's going on. And this is where the creativity of Tarantino and the character of Colonel Hans Landa come into play. Tarantino uses his dialogue to increase the emotional significance of anticipated events. As I mentioned in my video about The Social Network, Aaron Sorkin uses his dialogue to mask exposition, and Tarantino does the same thing. 
part of my plan, my method, is to bury it in so much minutia about nothing that you don't realize you're being told an important plot point until it becomes important. <laughs> when there is obvious exposition, it's doing two things at once. Like when Landa literally asks the farmer, Perrier La Petite, to tell him about himself. Please tell me what you've heard. I've heard that the Führer has put you in charge of running up the Jews left in France. Why are they hiding or passing for Gentile? These lines aren't just about exposition. They're about Landa subtly flexing his power. And the way he does it, through the guise of politeness, helps evoke strong emotional reactions from the audience and increase tension. Landa begins by complimenting the attractiveness of La Petite's family. Monsieur La Petite. Vos filles sont toutes plus jolies les unes que les autres. Merci. Then, he requests milk instead of wine. This is an innocent enough request, except for the way he grabs the daughter's hand as she's getting the wine. Mais non, merci beaucoup, monsieur, la petite pas de vin. Puisque nous sommes sur une exploitation laitière, je suppose sans risque de me tromper que vous avez du lait? Oui. Alors, je préfère du lait. Londa noting how attractive he finds the daughters, combined with his grabbing of one of them, creates a very uncomfortable feeling. A kind of implied threat delivered with a smile. This aspect of Londa enhances yet another element of suspense. Uncertainty. Everything Londa does, I mean, he, I mean, he is a detective. That's first and foremost where he's coming from. He's a detective. And everything he does is some version of an interrogation. And every piece of interrogation is uh, a, a piece of theater or, or, or uh, a mind game with uh, the participant. Colonel Londa plays mind games with La Petite throughout the scene. They are often tiny things, like requesting permission. Je vous demande la permission de passer à l'anglais pour le reste de la conversation. Certainly. He's acting as if La Petite has the power, but they both know that Landa is an SS colonel with soldiers outside, who he could order to kill La Petite and his family if he so chose. So by behaving as if La Petite has any control, Oh please, Monsieur La Petite, this is your house, make yourself comfortable. Landa is really just reminding him of how little control he has. These mind games increase uncertainty, and thus increase the tension. But the uncertainty doesn't come just from Londa's character. It also comes from the lack of information given to the audience. So now I want to talk about the moment halfway through the scene that changes the context of the entire conversation. Alfred Hitchcock, the master of suspense, once offered the following example. He said to imagine there are a couple people sitting around a table. Talking about baseball, whatever you like. Five minutes of it, very dull. Suddenly, a bomb goes off. According to Hitchcock, this provides the audience with only five or ten seconds of shock. But... Now take the same scene and tell the audience there is a bomb under that table and will go off in five minutes. When you tell the audience that there is a bomb under the table, suddenly it becomes an emotional experience. In the Lenin Kolsch paper, they make a distinction between tension and suspense. They define tension as a more diffuse general state of anticipation, and suspense as a more specific anticipation between clearly opposed outcomes. The transition from tension to suspense happens when Tarantino decides to tell the audience about the bomb under the table, or in this case, the family beneath the floorboards. This is a big change that ratchets up our emotional investment. The significance of every piece of information we know is intensified. La Petite has lied about not knowing where the family is, and the people that Landa is looking for are literally right beneath his feet. This kind of midway revelation also re-energizes the scene, and the same technique is used in the tavern basement sequence. Dürfte ich mich vielleicht erkundigen? This is what allows Tarantino to have scenes like this be gripping for so long, and he argues that longer scenes are better for suspense. It's like the suspense is a rubber band, and I'm just stretching it and stretching it right, and stretching right. and see how far it can stretch. As long as that rubber band can stretch, the longer the scene it. can hold, the more suspenseful it is. That scene is more suspenseful at 22 minutes than would be at 8. Right. So you want to just stretch it until the rubber band breaks. And that's exactly what he does. After the audience has shown the family beneath the floorboards, 
Londa pretends like he's finished his work and that relief is just within reach. But then he asks for another glass of milk. However, before I go, could I have another glass of your delicious milk? And then brings up his nickname. Yeah, they call you the German, too. Precisely. And then goes on a two-page tangent about what animal German soldiers are versus what animal Jewish people are. And for a while, the destination of this tangent seems unclear. Again, the uncertainty. La Petite, previously thinking himself victorious and deceiving the officer, begins to lose his cool. And soon the destination of this tangent becomes painfully clear. However, the reason the Führer's brought me off my Alps in Austria and placed me in French cow country today is because it does occur to me. Because I'm aware of what tremendous feats human beings are capable of once they abandon dignity. Here, Wanda again flexes his power and evokes an emotional reaction. May I smoke my pipe as well? Tarantino has Londa stretch out the suspense as long as possible, until finally the suspense turns to dread. You are sheltering enemies of the state, are you not? Yes. You are sheltering them underneath your floorboards, aren't you? Yes. Now the suspense evolves one last time, as the uncertainty changes from if Vonda will find out, to what he will do now that he knows. In this area, I think the fact that the audience is aware they're watching a Tarantino film adds to the suspense. We know there will be consequences, and that Tarantino has no qualms about showing violence. And when the bomb finally goes off, it is as stressful and explosive as can be. Donc, monsieur, mesdemoiselles, Je prends congé de vous et je vous dis adieu. He motions to the soldiers with his index finger. They tear up the wooden floor with machine gun fire. The little farmhouse is filled with smoke, dust, splinters, screams, bullet casings, and even a little blood. This is the last important element of suspense and storytelling. There must be a payoff, good or bad. We need that catharsis, the new stability, horrifying as it is, in order to release reset, and prepare for what's next. Au revoir, Shoshana! There are many ways to create suspense in a story, but what I find impressive about Inglorious Bastards is how simple the elements are. By giving the audience some basic context, Quentin Tarantino is able to turn a chat across a table, or a card game, or having dessert, into some of the most suspenseful scenes ever put on film. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just want to say thank you to all my patrons for making this video and this channel possible. If you want to support this channel on Patreon, you can by clicking on the links below. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, you can at MichaelTuckerLA. I hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.